The Necromancy Kiln Cape gives a 33 damage bonus, but more importantly, it can be upgraded into the Necromancy Zut Cape. The Zut Cape improves the Death Skull's ability, so it hits up to 6 targets and only uses 60% adrenaline. The downside is to get the cape, you need to complete the kiln using Necromancy. However, there are some non-conventional methods that we're going to go over that allow you to get it as low as level 40 Necromancy, although realistically I'd probably wait until about level 60 so it's an easier time. While I go over the method, consider subbing for future Necro content. The kiln awards a cape for whatever style you clear the most waves with. There are 37 waves total, meaning you only need to clear 19 of them with Necromancy and the rest with another style. But that number drops even lower if you bring additional styles. If you bring ranged, melee, and magic along with Necromancy, then you only need to do 10 waves with Necromancy and then 9 with the other styles. It gets even better, for a wave to count as cleared with Necro, you only need to deal 51% of the total damage with Necromancy during the wave. So for example, let's consider wave 1. There are a total of 5 monsters, so let's say you kill 3 of them with Necromancy, you can kill the other 2 with melee instead, and it'll still count as a Necromancy wave. So basically, the total number of waves you need to clear is just 5. I put together this very cobbled setup, basically I just grabbed a 2H for each regular combat style and then the bodies and legs that go along with it. The rest of my gear is hybrid gear. You can also use the obsidian armor from the fight cauldron if you have that and swap helms with each style, although there's not a necromancy helm so you'll still want to bring your necromancy gear. After that I just brought general combat gear and a ripper demon. If you're concerned about supplies, you can bring a yak and it'll make it really a super easy breeze for you, but the Ripper Demon just sped things up, so that's what I brought. The waves you need to worry about are 10, 20, and 30, which all spawn Jad. Then waves 34 up also have Jad or the final boss. The easiest way for Necromancy are the starting waves for each 10 wave section of Jad, so like 1 to 10 is one Jad section. Then you can do waves 1 to 3 with Necromancy, and then the rest with another combat style like melee or ranged. Then you'll kill the Jad, after that swap back to Necromancy and do the next 3 waves with Necromancy, then swap to magic the next kills, kill the Jad, back to Necromancy, do those 3 waves with Necromancy, then switch to range, finish off with ranged, and then swap you know all those styles. You do want to do an extra wave with Necromancy to make sure you hit 10, and realistically I'd probably do a couple more just to really make sure you get enough, but you can count them carefully, you only need to do 10. I recommend using the walls to stay safe, clear one corner at a time to keep damage low while you're getting Necromancy kills. The melee monsters are particularly easy to deal with because you can run away from them between hits. You'll notice the accuracy numbers in the corner of each monster examine. If there's something you have terrible hit chance against, I'd swap to another style for it. Also, feel free to swap styles after over half the wave is cleared and heal with soul split. For dills, make sure you're using melee. If you're concerned about food, supplies, and you have the persistent rage relic, you can wait and gain adrenaline, then click that little regenerate button on your health bar, heal back up, regain adrenaline and repeat that until you're full health if you know you're having trouble staying alive that can really cheese you really far away besides that only other tip on the double jad wave make sure you're standing on the north side of the wall to start and use an invulnerability crystal just in case after that you should be all set it's possible to dart harakin and still get the cape if you'd like but it's not a bad fight so i just kill it honestly save the dart Overall, the whole fight is basically just a normal kill and run with some extra swapping. You can remove styles if you want, but just be aware you'll need to clear more waves with Necromancy. So if you only bring melee and mage, you'll need to clear 13 waves with Necromancy and so on. After you get your cape, it's time for Zuck. Luckily, all you need is an igneous stone, so you can finish him off with your favorite style to upgrade the cake, no Necromancy required. It adds a really nice buff to Death Skulls, so I definitely get it if you're able to. I'll be putting together an AFK guide for her mod next, which may use the ability.